stuff done. Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of my Wedding Bell series. In this episode, I'm going to be talking about your guest list. Okay, so your guest list is pretty much the number one thing that you want to figure out before you start really diving into wedding planning. The reason for this is because your guest list is the number one thing that drives up cost. If your guest list goes up, everything goes up. This includes more food, more drinks, more tables, more chairs, more linens, more centerpieces, more dishes, more favors, more place cards, more invitations, more stamps, more save the dates. You get the point. More everything. So you definitely want to figure out your approximate guest list number before hunting for venues because you want to find a venue that can accommodate the number of guests that you want to invite. And don't forget to include yourselves in your guest count, and your vendors for that matter. One thing that I've seen a lot on Facebook wedding groups or wedding forums is people run into their parents adding too many guests. They accidentally give parents free reign, say, okay, here, give me your list of who you want, and then when they get the list back, it's way more than they ever expected it would be. There are several ways to avoid this. The general rule is no pay, no say. So if parents aren't contributing anything financially towards your wedding, then technically they don't really have any say as to who is on your guest list. If you want a small wedding and you can't afford to invite tons and tons of people, then don't. So I'm going to give you some tips on how to trim your guest list. If you're looking at a guest list of 300 people and you think, how could I possibly even know that many people, here are some things you can do to cut it down. Cut out all coworkers. Coworkers are a group of people where, even if you're really close at work, you may not necessarily hang out outside of work, and generally speaking, coworkers often don't expect to get invited to your wedding, so there's not really going to be any hurt feelings there, unless of course, you know, you work with a best friend or something like that. Another way to cut down is cutting out extended family. So basically you're working from the outside in. So obviously the innermost people are the most important people in your lives. This includes obviously your grandparents, your parents, your siblings, your best friends. And then obviously every person and family is different in regards to who is in that, you know, must have section, but you get what I'm saying. So then working out from there, I know so many people have really large extended families and there are probably a lot of people who aren't as close with their extended family compared to me, for example. I'm very, I'm very close with almost everyone in my family, so I couldn't imagine not inviting any of them, or I couldn't imagine picking and choosing different pieces of my extended family and only inviting them. But that's not to say that you can't do that. If you're really close with one aunt and uncle, then invite them, but if you're not close with this other distant aunt and uncle, then you don't have to invite them. You don't need to feel obligated to invite people just because they're kind of in the same family circle, if that makes any sense. <laughs> cut out cousins, cut out second cousins, cut out family that you haven't seen in ages unless you're wanting to make it a family reunion type situation, then go for it, but these are just ways that you can cut down. That's not to say that I'm doing any of these things, these are just tips. <laughs> I'm inviting all of my cousins. I couldn't imagine not having them there. Another way to cut down is wedding invitations are not a tit for tat situation. So if someone has invited you to their wedding, that doesn't necessarily mean that you have to invite them to yours. Circumstances change, friendships are different. You may consider yourself close with someone, but they might not consider yourself as close to them, if that makes sense. I know I have a few friends that, you know, I feel close with on a certain level, but they probably have, you know, they have other friendships in their lives that they're closer to, so in terms of their list of friends that they're close to, I'm probably way down here, whereas on my list of friends, they're probably higher up for me. In which case, I would invite them, but I wouldn't expect them to invite me. So again, you don't need to feel obligated to invite these people just because you were invited to theirs. Lastly, something that's very common and something that a lot of people do is to exclude children. This can get a little bit dicey because obviously there are probably a lot of parents who aren't comfortable leaving their children with a babysitter, or who would get offended by their children not being invited, but to each their own, cutting out kids is a good way to cut costs, and it's often an accepted route. So you can say that you're having an adult-only affair, and that's it. No children under the age of 18. At the end of the day, it's your guest list, and you need to own it. Own your guest list. Don't let people push you around. Invite who you want, and invite the amount you can afford. And that's all I've got for this video. So if you enjoyed this video, please click that thumbs up button and hit 
that subscribe button if you want to see more of my Wedding Bell series. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye!